Noah, you've done some work on the southwestern part of the United States. Um, how hot, how bad is it going to get in the southwestern, in other parts of the United States? You've done some modeling there on what we can expect regarding heat in the climate um, era. Yes, yeah, so we had a, uh, we had a paper, a student and I uh, had a paper that came out this summer uh, on the US and, and what we might expect over the next three decades uh, as greenhouse gas concentrations increase. And um, what we expect in terms of the, say the carbon dioxide concentrations is relatively moderate over the next three decades compared to a lot of the scenarios that we hear about, uh, say for the year 2100. Um, so this is a, a global warming envelope that, that falls within uh, the Copenhagen Accord, for example. So we wanted to focus on this near-term period to try and to- And it falls within the life period of most people in this room and listening to this on the radio, something people can relate to. That's one of my frustrations with climate science. Is like 2100, I'm like, a lot of people respond, and I know you guys, have more confidence the further out you go. So anyways, continue about closer in, 30 years. Well, so those are the reasons you mentioned were part of why we were interested in this, in this period. Um, <laughs> and so over this period, we expect something on the order of another degree Celsius of global warming uh, relative to the last decade. And uh, we find that, that over the US, the summer temperatures increase two to three degrees Celsius as a result of that one degree of global warming. So an enhancement over the US relative to the global average. And then if we look at individual points in the US and ask how often do historical hot events occur? So what, uh, say, the hottest season of the second half of the 20th century or the longest heat wave that occurred in the second half of the 20th century, how often does an event of that magnitude occur going forward? We find that uh, by the decade of the 2030s, uh, the hottest, what was the hottest season of the second half of the 20th century occurs anywhere from five to eight times in the U.S. And in the southwestern part of the U.S., the, the warming is, is very robust, very intense. Uh, and most areas see something on the order of seven or eight of those historically hottest seasons uh, in a single decade. So the former extremes become the new norm? Uh, to the extent that, that seven years out of ten uh, is normal, then... If you're a baseball uh, player, you hit 7 out of 10, you're, you're, you're in the Hall of Fame. So, uh, right? Uh, so the things that used to be unusual are going to be more common in terms of the heat, the heat yeah, extremes. The most unusual summer of the second half of the 20th century, uh, we project to happen seven or eight times in a decade uh, in the southwestern U.S. And are you able, policymakers often are frustrated because the models are so macro that they don't give them actionable intelligence, actionable information within their congressional district or their state or their area of responsibility, a water district, that sort of thing. How close are you, these models getting to give policymakers information they can act on to say, look, this is going to affect our water supply here. We've got to start building desalination plants or whatever we're doing, responding, preparing for these sorts of things. Well, so we've, we've pushed uh, over the last five years or so uh, to dividing the world up into 25 kilometer boxes, so say 15 miles on a side. Let me ask you a question. You're talking in kilometers and Celsius, and most Americans live in miles and Fahrenheit, and Celsius and kilometers, even with, you know, don't translate. Is that a scientific convention, or that, that doesn't translate well to me? Uh, well, it's, it's absolutely a scientific convention. In fact, um, if a paper uh, is submitted uh, with with uh, the, those U English units rather, those funny than, British things, rather yes. than what we call SI units, uh, it will actually be sent back and, and the authors will be required to, to change all the units. So, so it's example, more than a convention. So this is an example of having to sort of speak, run off a differing operating system when you do your scientific work versus your communication work, to speak in miles versus in, in one part of your life and speak in uh, kilometers in another part If of your you're life. speaking in, to the public in the US. Yeah. There are, there are countries, there are countries that, that use uh, <laughs> Most of the kilometers in Celsius. Yes. Um, so we're the exception. We dumb it down for America. Is that, yeah. Um, at any rate, uh, a, a lot of what my lab group does is, is try to push those, those spatial and also temporal resolutions. So uh, to really try to get down to the, to the scales that, that matter for, for humans and other, other living things. Um, so you know, we're, it, it's pretty routine for us to look at at say the county level, um, and now we're, we're trying to get down really to the local level where we're looking at say one mile, dividing the world up into one mile boxes.